As House Speaker, Mike Johnson is as dangerous as Jim Jordan. If you are feeling any sense of relief that Jim Jordan won't be the next House Speaker, stop and worry again. The new Speaker, Rep. Mike Johnson, Republican Louisiana, might be more dangerous than the firebrand Ohio Republican. For Jordan's shirt sleeves demeanor and wrestler's pugnacity, substitute a bespectacled, low-key presentation, a law degree and an unswerving commitment to conservative dogma and former President Donald Trump. This is not an upgrade. It is Jordan in a more palatable package, evidently smoother, seemingly smarter and, therefore, potentially more effective. Johnson, now serving his fourth term in Congress, was the moving force behind a Supreme Court brief that helped lay the shoddy intellectual groundwork for January 6, 2021. In December 2020, he rallied fellow Republican lawmakers to support Texas' brazen bid to overturn the election results. In a lawsuit that fizzled almost as soon as it was filed, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton sought to have the Supreme Court intervene in the election by blocking the certification of electoral college votes in four swing states, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan and Wisconsin, where voting rules had been changed in the course of the election and voters, not coincidentally, had favored Joe Biden. The justices swiftly rejected the case, tartly noting that, Texas has not demonstrated a judicially cognizable interest in the manner in which another state conducts its elections. But not before Johnson rallied the GOP troops to sign on to a friend of the court brief backing the Texas lawsuit, and took pains to emphasize that Trump was keeping score. He said he will be anxiously awaiting the final list to review, Johnson wrote on what was then Twitter. Johnson later told The New Yorker's Isaac Kotiner that he regretted that wording. It did not cross my mind that somebody would interpret it as making an enemies list or something, he said. It should have, in hindsight. It was a very casual conversation. The president was not making a threat. Nor was I, of course. Of course not. Purity test or no, 126 of his House colleagues fell dutifully in line. The Johnson brief was a full-throated endorsement of the independent state legislature theory, ultimately rejected by the Supreme Court in 2023's Moore v. Harper. The brief asserted that under the terms of the Constitution, only state legislatures, without any review by state courts or involvement of other state parties, have power to set rules for choosing presidential electors. The clear authority of those state legislatures to determine the rules for appointing electors was usurped at various times by governors, secretaries of state, election officials, state courts, federal courts, and private parties, the brief argued. Due in large part to those usurpations, the election of 2020 has been riddled with an unprecedented number of serious allegations of fraud and irregularities. National polls indicate a large percentage of Americans now have serious doubts about not just the outcome of the presidential contest, but also the future reliability of our election system itself, it continued, as if the supposedly serious doubts had not been sowed by Trump himself. Don't rely on the assessment of Democrat Josh Shapiro, then Pennsylvania's attorney general, now its governor, that Texas' effort to interfere in those states' determinations was a seditious abuse of the judicial process, as he told the justices. Rather, listen to Texas Republican Representative Chip Roy, no liberal squish, who declined to sign the Johnson brief and denounced the Paxton bid as a dangerous violation of federalism that sets a precedent to have one state asking federal courts to police the voting procedures of other states. Not that this stopped Roy from voting Wednesday to make Johnson speaker. Running for Congress in 2016, he described himself as a Christian, a husband, a father, a lifelong conservative, constitutional law attorney and a small business owner in that order, and I think that order is important. Johnson said he had been called to legal ministry and I've been out on the front lines of the culture war defending religious freedom, the sanctity of human life, and biblical values, including the defense of traditional marriage and other ideals like these when they've been under assault. His congressional career has been more of the same, including backing a federal ban on abortion after 15 weeks. Johnson twice served on the impeachment teams defending Trump and pushed to expunge the first impeachment from the record. His fealty to the former president seems to have paid off. My strong suggestion is to go with the leading candidate, Mike Johnson, v. Get It Done, 
fast. Trump advised on his social media site Tuesday. So, they did. As House Speaker, Mike Johnson is as dangerous as Jim Jordan. If you are feeling any sense of relief that Jim Jordan won't be the next House Speaker, stop and worry again. The new Speaker, Rep. Mike Johnson, Republican Louisiana, might be more dangerous than the firebrand Ohio Republican. For Jordan's shirt sleeves demeanor and wrestler's pugnacity, substitute a bespectacled, low-key presentation, a law The incoherence of Pope Francis. The Vatican offers confusion instead of clarity in Gaza, Ukraine and China. Pope Francis called President Biden on Sunday to talk about Gaza. The papal phone call came amid Israel's public criticism of the Vatican's tendency to treat the Israel Defense Forces as morally equivalent to the Hamas terrorists who targeted, attacked and butchered unarmed Israeli civilians. Israel's irritation was kicked off by a joint statement on October 7, the day of the Hamas attack, from the patriarchs and heads of churches in Jerusalem. This is an ecumenical Christian group that includes the Catholic Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem. The leaders did unequivocally condemn acts that target civilians. But the statement didn't name Hamas, and it called for the cessation of all violent and military activities that bring harm to both Palestinian and Israeli civilians. The Israeli embassy to the Holy See said the statement reflected an immoral linguistic ambiguity. From reading it, the embassy response said, there is no way to understand what happened, who were the aggressors and who the victims. Pope Francis has since affirmed the right of Israelis to defend themselves and called for the release of Israeli hostages. But a week later, the patriarchs and church leaders issued a second statement, and the Pope followed with an address calling for humanitarian law to be respected in Gaza. Israelis took these as a shots directed at them. For missing from the Pope's remarks was any appreciation that Israeli forces will invade Gaza to ensure that Hamas can never pull off such a barbarous attack on their people again. Likewise missing is an acknowledgement that Hamas bears primary moral responsibility for any civilian deaths from Israel's military entry into Gaza because Hamas deliberately hides among the Palestinian population, using them as human shields. Israeli Foreign Affairs Minister Eli Cohen made clear what Israel wants from the Vatican, an unequivocal and clear condemnation of the murderous terrorist acts perpetrated by Hamas terrorists that caused grievous harm to children, women, and the elderly just because they are Jews and Israelis. Vatican incoherence is also sowing confusion in Ukraine. As with Gaza, the Pope's insistence on defining the problem as war itself, not Vladimir Putin's unjustified invasion of a neighbor, also suggests moral equivalence. So even though he has talked about a right of nations to defend themselves and referred to martyred Ukraine, these get swallowed up by his both sides approach on war. In August, Ukrainians were horrified when the Pope, via video, told young Russian Catholics gathered in St. Petersburg that they are heirs to the great, enlightened Russian Empire as embodied by Peter the Great and Catherine the Great. As Ukrainians well know, and the Pope should have known, Mr. Putin has invoked this legacy to justify his invasion of their homeland. The Pope later had to clarify that he wasn't endorsing Russian imperialism. But the damage was done. Sviatoslav Shevchuk, head of Ukraine's Greek Catholic Church, said the Pope's words were painful and difficult for the Ukrainian people, who are currently bleeding in the struggle for their dignity and independence. Finally there is China. Unlike in Israel and Ukraine, there is no war in China, but an invasion of Taiwan can't be ruled out. Yet the Vatican has been largely silent on Beijing's outrages, including the genocide of the Uyghurs. Last week the Acton Institute held the Rome premiere for its documentary, The Hong Konger, Jimmy Lay's Extraordinary Struggle.